Hi and welcome to this hopefully quick little demo on how to do tileable textures using the new nano mesh and the array mesh functions in ZBrush 4R7. So I've got this little grass plate modeled here and it's very sim simple as you can see and um, it actually has a texture map assigned so it's not poly painted but actually UV texture map. Very simple again of course. And I'm just going to look at it from the top view, well, sort of a top view because this is going to determine uh, at what alignment this nano mesh is going to be created later on. So I'm going to go to the brush palette and click on the create insert mesh and it's going to ask me if I want to create a new brush or pen to an existing one. I'm just going to choose a new one and then again go to the brush palette and click on the create nano mesh brush. And that's going to give me a new Z modeler brush which has this geo attached to it. But for now, this is all the uses we have for this blade. So I'm going to create a plain 3D object and make it a PolyMesh 3. Actually, I think I have quick mode turned off. Oh, on. Um, so I have a simple plane and I'm just going to, with this C model I brush selected, hover over polygon and press space and make sure to have insert nano mesh turned on and polygroup all which is gonna create one nano mesh per polygon on this plane and then just drag out a geo so you can see I have one plate per polygon and then in the two properties I go to the nano mesh sub mesh and then just change some of these settings just to get some variations and all the randomization parameters are on the right side so you can Play with these things a little bit. I'm gonna apply Z offset just to get it a little bit higher. And I think I don't want it quite as wide. And add some random rotation to to it. Increase the size. Increase the random distribution. It's a little bit too, too even. So let's keep playing with this. I'm going to increase the H tile and choose a slightly different pattern. Now you can see I don't have any use saturation shift going on. That is um, because I have a UV based texture on it. That is currently not possible. But um, when you have poly paint, you can actually use the colorize here to uh, shift uh, the colors around a little bit. Um, there are ways around it. You can um, export later on a document grab of your um, polygroups and then you can make a new saturation shift manually in Photoshop but for now this is good enough I'm gonna go to my document palette and choose my target texture size which is 4k in my case and then resize my document and it's gonna drop the active tool to the canvas so i'm going to zoom out to completely frame my my canvas it's important for later on and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change my document color because i don't want any uh this gradient happening and then i'm going to clear my canvas using Control n and i still have my active tool so i'm going to drag it up and hold shift to to uh, be in autographic mode. And for now, I'm gonna turn off nano mesh for a second and then frame my. So you have seen what happens if I am not fully zoomed out, it didn't quite frame the object correctly. So now I have the plane filling my canvas completely. And I'm gonna go down to the deformation palette. And under the offset, 
I'm going to apply an X offset of 100 and then turn on the Y offset and turn off X and do another offset of 100. Go back to my nano mesh and turn it on. And we actually need to convert this to a uh, to an actual mesh because we want to use it as an array mesh. And unfortunately, even though array mesh is supposed to instance the objects, it doesn't seem to be doing it 100% when nano meshes are involved. So there's a slight offset or a slight variation happening per instance. So we need to make sure that our object doesn't change. So I'm going to convert it to a uh, mesh by using the one to mesh function found under the inventory. And you see, I seem to have lost my texture, but actually the UVs are still intact. So I can always go down to the texture palette again and assign my original texture. Now go up to the array mesh and I'm going to stay out of my viewport navigation and just going to use the 2D zoom and I'm going to try to isolate, turn off my texture for a second so it's easier, I'm going to try to isolate my uh, plane again. So just invert the selection, zoom out using the 2D zoom and under the array mesh apply an X offset of minus two. Then click on the append new, which will append a new stage and basically instance this entire thing again and do Y offset of minus two. And the reason I have my uh, nano mesh hidden at the moment or my original nano mesh, because if I show it now, the bounding box is actually different and you can see I'm getting this cross happening. So I'm gonna position just the plane and then turn on the lock position and lock size. And now if I show my nano mesh or the result of the nano mesh, you can see everything is in the original alignment. And actually I just want to see just the plates and not my background planes. So I'm gonna use it like that and turn on my texture map again. And I'm gonna go to the alpha palette and do a uh, grab dock at the bottom and export that. And then assign a flat shader to a texture grab, grab dock and export. Head over to Photoshop, open my two files. Actually, you'll see my displacement is already fully tileable. So let me just paste that in. So this is my center point. If I apply an offset of 2K, you can see things are fully tileable. However, for the color map, this is unfortunately not the case. Um, that is mostly because ZBrush, even after 10 years, still has the same bug that it adds one pixel at the top and one at the bottom for your color. So I need to basically clip out this color by using the canvas size and reducing it by two pixels at the or one at the top, one at the bottom. And then scale up my image to my original 4K. And now we're tileable here as well. So you can see everything tiles. And if I just save this out for a second, actually I need to make sure that this is RGB 8-bit. I'm just going to quickly undo this and do a grayscale 16-bit for the displacement. Back to ZBrush, reframe my document so it's not the 4K anymore, and then just choose a polyplane again, make it a poly mesh, and load in my 
my diffuse and load in my alpha. And assign that to the color and I'm gonna assign this to the displacement map. Uh, Not much happening at the moment. Turn on mode. You can see the plane is not subdivided, so I'm gonna go into bump mode just to show you what happens when you have actually resolution. So it actually shades quite nicely. And the alpha, the gaps in between are uh, black in the textures, so ZBrush is clever enough to remove them so you have a nice transparency. And again, um, if you want to introduce U-Shift, uh, well, first of all, if you want to introduce multiple different meshes, uh, you can use multiple different planes and just mix it together and do a grab with multiple, um, like a Z-grab with multiple sub-tools on. And um, if you want to, if you want to use the uh, a U shift because my original object was a mesh you can always regroup the polygroups to auto groups which will um, give you one uv group per per grass Actually, let me see do i still have my original plane 3d object seem to so this was my original full geo and if i turn on my Polyframe, you can see I've got polygroups here, but they're all the same. So I'm just going to regroup. It's going to take one second. That's going to give me one color per grass plate. And from there on out, you can export that to Photoshop and apply U Shift to it. And that's pretty much already it. Uh, hope you like it. Actually, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. And uh, yeah, but there, it's definitely quite useful and hope you like it.